A couple of weeks ago, we showed you something that we're calling Project X. And this week, we're gonna jump into our first build segment, get our hands dirty, and show you how to change a track. The project in a nutshell is to take a 2010 Polaris 800 Assault 146 and shorten it up to 136 inches. And along with a bunch of cool aftermarket parts, make ourselves the ultimate flatland free riding sled. For today's segment, I'm gonna be tackling the most important and technical part of this build, the removal of the 146 inch mountain skid, the mountain track, and the mountain drivers. And I'll go ahead and replace those with the 136 inch versions. The first thing to go is the stock 146 inch mountain skid frame and suspension. While we really enjoy the way the Assault works in the mountains, it's just a little too long for our neck of the woods. After getting the skid out of the track, we're gonna be ready for step two, removing the track and drivers. Now this is a big job to tackle, and it requires splitting the chain case, removing the chain and gears, as well as breaking down the drive shaft bearing assembly on the clutch side of the sled. While sled designs vary, this process is fairly standard across most snowmobile manufacturers. Now one thing to think about while I'm doing this, you might not want to change the length or pitch of your track like I'm doing, but you may be wondering if you can equip your sled with either a deeper or shallower lug, an aggressive on-trail performer, or a pre-studded ice track. And the answer to all of these is yes. Camelplast makes a wide variety of tracks for your snowmobile, whether it's brand new or 15 years old. And those same tracks are gonna totally change the way your snowmobile performs and completely revive your ride. Because we're making a change from a mountain skid to a flatland skid, the drive pitch of the track is different, so we need to change the drivers. Simply, the rubber nubs on the track the drive gears pick up are a different configuration on our 136 inch track, and reinstallation is as easy as reversing our steps. With our new drivers and track installed, we're ready to face the fun stuff. Because our new skid is so much smaller than the old one, the bolt holes aren't gonna line up perfectly, so we're gonna have to be a little creative. With the front arm length of the 146 and 136 inch skids being very similar, I decided to use the same front bolt locations. This will mean the angle of attack is very similar. With the front bolts in place, I can pull the skid frame up into the tunnel and roughly mark where the rear arm should mount. The Assault's designed to have a 146 inch skid, however the tunnel is the same as a switchback. So we're gonna drill out the riveted rear arm bracket and go ahead and remount it in our new location. We took measurements from a current IQ chassis with a 136 inch skid frame, so we know our measurements are correct, and we can check back with that sled as our guideline. Once we have the brackets in the proper location, we'll drill and rivet them back on, ensuring we use healthy sized rivets capable of doing the job. We can now bolt our rear skid frame into place and tighten everything down. While most of our trail tech stories deal with easy to do projects, we know there's always a group of riders wanting us to go to the next level. So tune in each week as our project sled takes shape. 